This is the second in a three-part short series, just 10 minutes on each video, three-part short series on things that stand in the way of your recovery, things that stand in the way of your growth. These are things that I've typically found to be maybe the three most uh, important or typical things that stand in the way of people's growth when they try to recover. Now, in the first one, we looked at choosing the softer option. People tend to choose uh, the softer option and what happens is uh, nothing happens. Uh, I heard it put this way once. Um, if you're going, uh, if, if, if the going's easy, that's because you're going downhill. Um, it's much easier to, um, to roll down a hill than it is to climb up it, right? So what I've found is that when we're trying to grow as an individual, when we're trying to develop personally, that we're always having to choose the tougher option. And that's what helps grow us up, is basically we're, we're choosing to do the more difficult thing. Now, in this one, we're going to look at another very big idea uh, in, in this series, which is the, uh, looking at others. Now, looking at others, but what I mean by that is uh, that instead of looking at yourself, you're looking at other people. Now, um, looking at others actually is so easy. Um, do you know what? You don't even have to go to college for this. You're probably all experts in it. You could probably tell me everything that's wrong with everybody that you know. Um, you could tell me uh, what they should be doing more of, what they should be doing less of, what, what, what they always get wrong, and so on. It, it's so easy. There's only one problem with it. As long as you're doing it, uh, you're not going to get anywhere. There is simply no growth in looking at someone else. Now, it, it, this is uh, fascinating to me, you see, because you may be right in what you say. You may be perfectly skillful in assessing other people. It doesn't matter. There's no growth in it for you. So, um, based on the previous podcast saying things uh, that are the best things to do are always the most difficult, here's, here's one in that series, looking at yourself rather than something and than somebody else. Spotting someone else's mistakes or flaws is simply a no growth practice. Now, all development choose, makes, uh, involves choosing the tougher choice. That's the, that's the big idea here. You have to go for the tougher choice. Now, the second idea in looking at others as, as, as a problem is that it basically leads you to a world of frustration. The, the, to the extent that you say, my recovery depends upon what he says, what she does, what the bank allows, what my family allow, whatever it is that other people have to do in order for you to recover, you're on the wrong track. You're on the wrong track and um, I, I understand that there's an irony here because my whole approach is based on relationship and inappropriate relationships and the idea that I'm now saying, but it's got nothing to do with other people. I do get the irony here, but let me try and explain it briefly. You see, you can recover. Absolutely, you can recover, no matter what anyone else does or says. Absolutely. But why then is it based on relationship? Well, because it matters what you do in that relationship, not what they do in that relationship. So. Strongly, I would say relationship is a factor, but only based on what you do. So I hope that kind of uh, clears that up a little bit. Um, really, we're talking about boundaries here. And I think about boundaries in terms of two properties having a fence between them. So, you know, you might have your house and their house and you've got a fence between them. Now, if your fence is built too close to your house, then effectively you're asking them to mow some of your lawn. If your fence is too far away from your house, you're effectively trying to mow someone else's lawn. In other words, you're trying to either get them to do things for you that you really should be doing for yourself, or you're trying to do things for somebody that they should be doing for their self. I think you get the idea. That's the simplest way of understanding boundaries. And once we get these wires uncrossed, once you start to know really what is mine, and what is theirs, then everything starts to make sense at that point. And you can take responsibility for yourself, you can make those tough choices, and you can start to grow as a person. So what's the third thing here um, about uh, looking at others? 
Well, the third thing is that it's the perfect excuse. It justifies your lack of growth. As long as you're looking at someone else uh, and particularly what they've done wrong and particularly what they do wrong to you, then you've got the perfect excuse never to grow. The only problem with that is you don't recover either. So if you're looking to really recover, then you have to stop giving yourself the perfect excuse. Once you understand uh, what it is uh, that's yours, then you've got to clean up your own room. You've got to take responsibility for yourself. And the harder that is to do, well, the more it exercises you, as per the last video. So once again, let's look at all three ideas here. Looking at others is a bad idea based on three things. It's, there's no growth in it, absolutely no growth in it. Number two, it leads to a world of frustration. The, the, when you can get this back down to you and say, no, it matters what I do and what I do alone, then the frustration tends to go away. You tend to be able to work then. And number three, that it justifies your lack of growth or it gives you the perfect excuse never to recover. So I hope that's helpful. Again, there'll be some links below the video just to show you uh, some written and audio content to go into more detail on these ideas. Uh, see you next time.